I, I have called Ann Coulter a gangling, gurgling, reactionary buffoon. Now, is that merely physical description, or would you call that snark? I'll you, let you decide. You tell me. Uh, I, I think it because borders. Because one is okay and the other isn't, well, right? This is my, my feeling is anything, Brian, that creates language. Anything that is a new metaphor, even a fresh physical description, a startling physical description, even yeah, it may be nasty, but gets you to see something in a different way or something that takes a cliché and inverts it. Those are better than snark. Those are not. Winston Churchill, who ha- had a mean tongue as well as an eloquent tongue, there was a, a member of parliament he didn't like, Brett, Bessie Braddock, and, he, and a Labor member of parliament. He said, I wouldn't touch her with a 10-foot pole. Right? And the backbenchers shouted, shouted, shame, sir, shame, apologize. He said, all right, I would touch her with a 10-foot pole. That's mean. That's nasty. It's personal. But he, see what he did? He took a cliche and he inverted it. Anything that, is, that creates language in, in that way seems to me to avoid what I'm talking about, which is it's parasitic, it's uncreative. It just pulls some, something off the media junk heap. Uh, and gives it a nasty twist. And that's what there's a lot of out there. Somebody on our website reacts to uh, some stuff in your book and the subtitle of the book. The book, again, is Snark. It's mean, it's personal, and it's ruining our conversation. So Eva writes, good for Denby. But since he seems to like these Athenian and Hellenic examples, please ask him this. 2,300 years after the barrel-dwelling crank Diogenes lived, an amazing number of people can tell you about Dio's most memorable snarks. The lamp held up in daylight while looking for an honest man. Or his apocryphal request to Alexander the Great that he move aside, you're blocking my son. So I guess I take issue with people claiming anything that ordinary people do is ruining our conversation. Oh, I I wouldn't uh, say that um, that ordinary ordinary people are the villains here. Um, I do trace it back to the Greeks and the drinking clubs and so on, which were initially part where you could you know, assume the persona of a low-born Athenian. This is, these were aristocratic clubs and make fun of someone's uh, mouth, the sexual habits and the eating habits involving the mouth, that sort of thing. And then it grew out of that into public insult. But it, Brian, it had a kind of formal requirement. There, there, were, actually, there were poets who practiced invective. Um, which were personal attacks against other people, but you just couldn't drop your turds in the street, so to speak. You had to obey the rules of poetic discourse and Roman oratory, too. Cicero talks about it. Very highly developed. That, all of that uh, is, is a long way above in literary complexity from the kind of you know, casual, lazy, parasitic insult that I'm talking about. Now, the D.C. blog, Wonkette, has taken issue with some of your citations of snark in the book. Um, Do they have a lawsuit against you or something? No. No. Or there was some, uh, maybe they just used the word libelous. Oh, well, I said that they they made fun of uh, Ted Kennedy's drinking habits, and um, it was a post that had been made when he was in the hospital for an earlier operation prior to the brain tumor. Uh, they said the doctors found a bottle of Jameson logged, uh, lodged in his, his neck. But then they, re- they reintroduced this post on the day he could have died for having brain surgery. So that was, that was what I was reacting to, and I mentioned it in the book. And Wonket is, um, uh, and other sites owned by Nick Denton, the internet entrepreneur, a gawker, are almost entirely, I would say entirely, <laughs> composed of nasty put-downs of other people. They don't check anything. They don't make any telephone calls. They just pull something off, off of a gossip page and give it a little nasty twist. And, you know, it's, I mean, it, it can be funny, I admit, but it really wears you out after a first few okay. glances. One, one more. Snark sure, sure. or not from Saturday Night Live this weekend. On Thursday, Kellogg's announced that it was dropping its Frosted Flakes endorsement with Michael Phelps, saying his marijuana use is not consistent with the company's image, which brings me to a segment I like to call Really with Seth. (laughs) Really, Kellogg? Marijuana is not consistent with your image? Because I thought it was totally consistent. You know every one of your mascots is a wild-eyed cartoon character with uncontrollable munchies. And also, I checked out your website. Did you know you have a recipe for dessert nachos? And that you make cookie straws to drink the leftover milk out of the waffle cereal you also make? Every one of your products sounds like a wish a genie granted at a fish concert. I mean, really. And USA Swimming, really? You suspended Phelps for three months? 
Really, USA Swimming? Way to sacrifice. Now we won't be able to compete for you in the highly anticipated not the Olympic swimming race. <laughs> really. And really, and this is the most important thing. Really, if you're at a party and you see Michael Phelps smoking a bong and your first thought isn't, wow, I get to party with Michael Phelps, and instead you take a picture and sell it to a tabloid, you should take a long look in the mirror because you're a d I mean, real. <laughs> All right, 15 seconds. That sounds like snark putting down snark, doesn't it? It is. It was it's a, a satire of snark. Yeah, I thought that was okay. I was maybe not inspired, but it was an extended comic riff. Um, anyth you know, anything as developed as that goes beyond the, the, the casual insult.